How's it going, everybody? We are home this time back in Windsor, Ontario, in the basement of the Dominion House over on Windsor's west side. I'm here this time with Bobby Yanakoulias of Black Mastiff. How's it going, brother? Good. How are you doing? Excellent, man. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for joining us here in the basement of the DH. Actually, a uh, bit of an interesting story uh, for some people, maybe. Uh, this used to be a venue a long, long time ago, and when I first got back into music and started playing again, this venue was the first place that my band played a gig ever. So it's like down here, in down the, in, in the this basement. basement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it makes sense. <laughs> There's something about it makes sense, right? It it is. It's interesting, interesting. But enough about my nonsense. Uh, really interesting. Uh, when when they reached out to me to to uh, ask me to have you guys on the show, um, I I took a look at some of your music. I hadn't I'd heard your name before because I, you've been dealing with uh, Gypsy Chief for a while, right? Gypsy Chief, no, I, that's, I'm not okay. familiar with that. Okay, is Gypsy Chief not playing the show tonight? Oh, is that I th the oh, opening that act? Would, I think that's uh, <laughs> I think that has to do with Cron Goblin has played here once before. Okay, and I think they played with. Uh, Gypsy Chief. Okay. In the past, this is our first time to Windsor. Okay. So maybe that might have been the connection. Somebody there. on like earlier today, I didn't connect Gypsy Chief with you guys at all until somebody earlier today said that Gypsy Chief was playing tonight, or yesterday said that Gypsy Chief was playing tonight. Yeah, there is another band. So maybe that, that is uh, who it is. From at, they're from Windsor. So that yeah okay. Or sorry, from Toronto, I think they are. The band that's playing from tonight is Toronto. This has gotten confusing. It has, yeah. But you know what? We're gonna work it out. We're gonna it's, we're gonna work it out it's, together. It's, it's, gonna, it's all good, and man. If we don't, but you know what? Like, it, it's funny because that almost talks about <laughs> that almost talks to the confusion that this stupid life really is, right? How long have you guys been on tour? Like, how long have you been a band on tour? Uh, for ten years. Oh, so you've been doing it for quite a while. Yeah. So you are used to basically never knowing where the hell you are. Yeah, pretty much. Talk yeah, to me about that. Much. It's uh, it's 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 funny. We were just talking about it when we got into the or when we were driving into Windsor, how it was just kind of a bit of a blur. Like this is this is about twenty shows this run for the release of the new record, and uh, we're halfway halfway through it already. And we're halfway through it, but we're in Canada, right? So halfway through it is ten days ago we were in Edmonton, <laughs> right? You know, like so I don't ever however many thousands of kilometers that is, it's kind of weird because I thought about it. I'm like, oh, I think we're going to be, before we go out west, we're going to be back in Edmonton in like five days. And again, we'll have traveled this this distance. So it's it, it all tends to just be pretty chaotic. But I mean, when you're, just, when you're jamming like show after show after show after show, we've got, we had one day off in this entire run. Where were you? Uh, we were in, uh, we were, it, I think we were, we actually spent it driving because yeah. we played Winnipeg and then we had to get from Winnipeg to Sudbury. Okay. And it was about 18 hours. Mm -hmm. So we're like, oh, yeah, we're driving. So that was Thanksgiving. <laughs> it was our, <laughs> was our uh, drive from Winnipeg to, to Sudbury, which was, was quite a trek. But I mean, that's, that's what it is, right? When you're, when you're. Have you done all your touring in Canada? Yeah, we've done some in the U.S. We did a tour only once. We went to the U.S. with the band from. Oregon Red Fang, okay, there and uh, and that was a, a couple of years ago. Um, so, but but yeah, the the majority of our touring has all been in Canada. Touring in Canada is a different beast, right? Like you alluded to it initially, but yeah, like touring in Canada is not like touring in the states where you can go city to city to city like day after day after day, right? Yeah, for sure. Talk to me about your because you've been doing it for ten years. So, so give me some of the so give me some of the experience that you've picked up along the way. Uh, just kind of putting putting together a tour in a country that is this vast. Uh, I think a couple of things that I noticed specifically was like, um, a don't have any don't have any preconceived notions of what is going to happen, <laughs> because as well as you can prepare, you can prepare for some things, but the majority of it is just kind of like you don't know what the show is going to be like. A lot of times you don't know, and as soon as you start projecting those like ideas onto it. That's when everything just goes to shit, right? Like so, it's it's kind of like you just go and you know that we we have a we have an we have a starting point, and then we've got all these points along the way, and let's just have the play as good and have as much fun as we can. You know, talk to me about our thing. talk to me about learning some of those lessons. Give me give me some of the maybe some of the horror stories or at least some of the stories that stick out in your mind is like, oh, okay, we gotta fix that. I think the first 
Well, it, it was it was it was more just a, like I said about a, it's more of a mindset. But in the case of like, I think the first time we played Montreal, uh, we hadn't played Montreal before, and there was a uh, there was a you know we were trying to book a show and didn't really have a lot of options at the time. We weren't working with our booking agent at the time, and so we just went and and found. I don't even know how we found this place, but we found this place. I don't even remember what it was, but I remember that it was about twenty stairs to get to the door of the venue and then another 20 to get <laughs> into the venue. And we get we went there and we cuz cuz I was just like oh, I'm so amped. I mean we play Montreal. This is going to be great. It's so good and stuff. And uh and it was just like some kid's 18th birthday and he was just like I would assume that he was on some what still would be considered contraband. And he was playing his first show, and it's, I think his set was like an hour and a half as the Jesus. opener. And the, <laughs> well, it was just a complete mess. It was it actually what it, the biggest thing it taught me about was preparing my gear. Okay. So that no matter what's going on, I can still do my shit. As long as there's AC, a relatively good, decent supply of power, right. that I can do my stuff. And a lot of that comes down to, to like the, even just the way we play as a three piece, we're just playing together. Like we're just, it's not, we're not, there's not a lot of theatrics going on when we're playing. We're just, we're really playing as a group together. A lot of, a lot of our time is spent in a triangle. You know? <laughs> okay. Not to like, we're not, uh, you know, not trying to shut anybody out, but right. it's just like, we really kind of feed off each other a lot. And so that's our, our thing was just kind of like, don't worry about whatever's going on at the venue. Worry about like that we're tight. And the song and the show's good, and the music sounds good. <laughs> at least as good as we can make it sound, you know. Like right. <laughs> but well, and it's cause, and you play uh, like a, a kind of music that sort of requires a lot of focus on what you're playing as well, right? Yeah. Like it's as as much as like because it's stoner rock for lack of a better term, right? Yeah. So it, it, as as much as it's sort of like a a head banging, like get into it, dance around, like it's technical stuff. Yeah. So. Do you like? Do you let your mind sort of like you said? You block out all the other stuff on the venue, but is that is that because of experiences like like that, or is it just to sort of keep your focus on the music? It's 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 basically does both right. essentially. Like it, it's it, basically it's like my favorite part of playing in this band is playing in this band, right? Okay. And I and my favorite part about it is playing with the other two that I'm with, and that's like number one. That's number one over everything else. Over recording, over releasing records, everything. It's like playing together is 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 paramount for us, you know. And so so it's just more a case of uh, focusing in that sense. But but in terms of the the gear and and all those things and being prepared, it's just more like you've got both ends, right? Where it's like we like to play together, we like to be all tight, and we like to get into our triangle, but also. I want to make sure that I don't have to deal with anything. Like, I mean, worst case scenario, there I'm getting blue sh blue sparks in my teeth from the microphone. <laughs> right. Then we're an instrumental band that night, but we're playing no matter what. You know. Uh, happen, no, either way. Shout out to the Spotted Dog for those of you who remember <laughs> that venue. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, okay, so you had said uh, before we got here, you you grew up here in well, didn't grow up here in Windsor, but you spent some time here in Windsor, right? Yeah, I lived here for two years when I was a kid, and I and I remember, I remember it a lot. It was a very cool place. Like I had, it was a lot of strange experiences here. I remember getting uh, one of the most uh, vivid memories I have was coming home from school. Like I was saying, I lived on Wyandotte. Right outside of downtown, there was like a Woolworths and a Byway, something like that. There used to be. Yeah, yeah. years ago. <laughs> I don't know what's there now because sure. I haven't been back. And I remember going home from school, and I remember that like a village of, of like hobos had taken over my front stoop and wouldn't let me in my house. <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> like a nine-year-old. And I'm kind of like walking around like, what's going on? And, and that's one of those things that, you know, maybe as an adult, you might have thought, been horrified about if you just like oh my goodness I can't believe I had to deal with this but as a kid I was just kind of like I guess I'm gonna just go knock on the window until someone lets me in. <laughs> you know you just live That's through hilarious. life right? you live through life as things happen but it's also where uh, there was a park behind my house and I had a skateboard and I just ride this skateboard that my mom found at a garage sale this old like rotten wooded skateboard with uh, 
just clay wheels, and I would just ride around this park every day. Once I'd seen some guys bring a ramp and do some tricks and stuff, I thought it was the greatest thing. Ever. And uh, skateboarding would be my other great, great passion. And so it was like this city uh, introduced me to a lot of really neat stuff that I, I had never, never encountered before. And it stuck with me even to this day, though I've never been back. This right. is the first time I've been back since oh, then. Welcome back, man. Yeah, so 32 years. So there you go. Right. Talk to me, because y- you sort of touched on a couple things that, that give me an idea that you had a really interesting sort of upbringing. Because you said you moved to Windsor because mom was going to the university, right? So yeah. talk to me about childhood for you. Um, it was a lot of a lot of moving around. Mm-hmm. So I was, born in, I was born in Winnipeg. Um, went from Winnipeg to Prince Albert. From Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, to Regina, Saskatchewan. Then from Regina to Windsor, and then from Windsor to Edmonton. And, and it was always kind of, uh, my, my parents split up when I was pretty young, but but uh, going from Regina to Windsor, it was all a university. Like my mom did her, her bachelor's in Regina and then her master's here and then went to Edmonton to do her PhD in creative writing. And, uh, and so we just kind of went where she went, right? Like me and my sisters, sister and brother and um and yeah it was interesting it made it's who i am i'm the person i am because of it and but it was always uh it was always a pretty pretty interesting time right <laughs> you know so you you had brothers and sisters i have a i have a older brother who's actually in hamilton now and then my sister's in edmonton were were they around when you were living here in windsor yeah, they're they're uh, older than me. Oh, so okay. Like five, six years older, so they're kind of doing their own thing. So, mom moved to Windsor on her own with three kids, yeah. going to university. Yeah. After her doctorate. Well, I did tell you that I I lived on Wyandotte. Right. Started downtown. But but <laughs> but, but yeah, that almost crazy. that almost makes it more interesting yeah. to me, right? You know, when you got a passion for something, you've just got to follow it, right? And and sometimes like. And we're we came along for the ride, you know, like and and yeah. But was that something that was instilled in you? Like, did did mom talk about that? I think she was always a pretty positive role mo- model in terms of like pushing me to do things on the, the creative side. Like maybe she saw something, or maybe that was just her natural, you know, inclination to do stuff like that. But I think that uh, she was she was always really supportive of me doing that stuff and. And I think you grow up in different types of households too. Like some people grow up in households that are very family oriented in the sense that it's like everything is for the family. But we we weren't not for the family, but it was like you need to do your thing, right? Like, and that's kind of what where we came, where I remember coming from, anyways. And and that was kind of the basis for how I grew up. It was just like you got to follow what you're doing. Like I do things that like you know I skateboarded and play music like all things that are some people would think are absolutely ridiculous you know but it's to me it's just that's what i live and breathe you know when did music start coming in into your life uh i used to play my dad um my father just passed away this this summer but he was he always sang both my parents sang uh my mom was in the church choir my dad was is uh came immigrated here from greece in the 60s and he loved to sing and in the 80s, around maybe 89, 90, he s- actually started a band okay. uh, that would play Greek music for weddings and uh, special events and stuff like that. And a few times, he enlisted my older brother as a, a, a ma- player in it, but I would sometimes join him, too, and play with them. And so that was when I was, I mean, I was like 13. Um, and then before that, I mean, we got, got our first guitar here in Windsor. And uh, so I remember so that. So it was it was that early on for you. Yeah, yeah. Always yeah. playing, always playing music, um, but never in a regimented sort of way. Like I never took music lessons. I don't know how to read music. I don't know. It's just all, it's all from in here, you know. Like, you said mom and dad were both singers. Yeah. They do, but they don't play instruments. No. Do they read music though? Uh, yeah, my mom plays the piano. And oh, okay. Music and stuff like that. Okay. But, uh, but my father, uh, I don't think he reads. He didn't read that well in English. Okay. <laughs> to be honest, and maybe not even in Greek. So okay. Like, yeah, but, uh, but yeah. You said he passed fairly early on? Uh, he No, he passed away in July. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. You, they, they were divorced fairly early on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Was that, how was that for you? Divorce? Yeah. Um, I mean, in, in, in retrospect, it's easy to say that it, it 
formed who I am in some way, but uh, I don't really remember it that okay. much. I think I was like five. Oh, so it was really early on. Yeah, yeah okay. Was pretty young, and I was a late child too. So my, I think my sister and brother more are more kind of aware of what was going on at the time. But I was just like, hey, hey, babe, you know, your kid, you just go on with whatever's around you. I'm trying to sort of. It seems to me like it. It seems to me that when you were a kid coming up, you had a lot of like space, like yeah. a lot of freedom. Yeah, I did whatever I wanted. Was that a positive for you, or did you? How was that? I, I think that that, I mean, again, it's something that, you know, you look at it and go, on one hand, um, on one hand, oh, it would have been great if I had somebody motivating me to do things. Because with that freedom sometimes comes, um, I mean, you not, not, not being ignored, but basically like do whatever you want and then you do whatever you want. And I think there was this point in time I remember when I was a kid that <coughs> I... I kind of had wished that I had been had a little more rules in my life. Okay. Because I just kind of, like I said, I got, I got to do whatever I want. And then when it came to a point when, you know, I was kind of a little shit kid, but when it came to a point when there was kind of an issue, it was all, I'm like, well, you can't start telling me what to do now. <laughs> you know, like, oh, it's really? like okay. you tell me what to do. You should have started doing that 10 years ago. <laughs> it's you too know? late <laughs> now. That's funny. So I. And and it, I don't think that either my sister or brother had that same kind of freedom, but maybe it comes with the fact that like you know the parents split up and stuff, and so I just had more more freedom to kind of do and explore and do whatever I wanted, you know. You, you I know music and skateboarding are like your primary primary focuses, but like, do you consider yourself an artist? Do you think of yourself as an artist? Yeah. Oh, for sure. I I mean I do I do a lot. I'm kind of I like to do a lot of things. That. Uh, I'm not sure if you had a chance to check it out, but I made an animated video for one of our songs. Oh, okay. That was, that's up on YouTube right now, and it was a uh, four like it's like a four minute animated. What's the song? Uh, it's called Starbase Seventy Seven. Okay. And uh, that was uh, it was a combination of just uh, cell frame animation and rotoscoping, um, where you I don't know if you're familiar with oh, rotoscoping. Yeah. Kind of like the old uh, Hobbit, 70s Hobbit. Yep. That was my inspiration from remembering okay. that as a kid, you know? Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, I did that. And so, yeah, I guess I'd consider myself an artist, you know? It's not but something you think like, about it, though? It's not something you think about? I don't think about it maybe necessarily in that way. I just like to do things, you know? Okay. That's kind of how my brain works. It's like I think of something I want to do, and I need to do it. And if I, it, as soon as the opportunity arises, like, for instance, in the case of animation, you know, I think probably the reason I didn't do it was because it was extremely difficult, but also having all of the equipment was a was a drawback. Yep. And nowadays, um, well, what, what ended up happening was uh, one of the professors at the University of Alberta heard me talking one day at this bar that I work at about about drawing and stuff. And, he, and so he brought me a, uh, it was like an obsolete piece of equipment from the university. So he said, hey, you want to try this? You can borrow it. And it was a tablet with the sc your computer screen is the, it's kind of, there are a lot of them these days. Yeah. But this one specifically, it's like 20 inches. Yeah. And so I was able to draw on this thing and, and animate my, my video. And, it, and like within, this is going from like no knowledge of doing this to having a four minute video. It was about a period of about four months. And that was a 2400 frame animated film. And I sat there for like a, uh, the the time I actually spent animating was probably about two and a, two and a half months, and I did between eight and sixteen hours a day doing it, and then working, and you yep. know, like. But I was obsessed. That's what I mean. Like I just need to get it out of my head. But is that is that how you've always been? Yeah. Like you find something <laughs> and it's it you just lock onto it like a bulldog until it's done and then you stare out windows for three months. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Look at a lot of trees. Right. Yeah, I, I was doing that this morning actually in Toronto. We were staying at this hotel and it was like the craziest hotel because it was this pretty swank spot that we 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 just got because we ran out of options, but uh. But outside, it was like everything that you could imagine would be going on in downtown Toronto was happening <laughs> outside this one window. And then a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was a squirrel on a tree. So it was, cool. it was pretty cool. So you just spent your time watching? Yeah, I probably spent like, I mean, I was just waiting for the other guys to get ready. 
and so I just sat there staring out the window. But I do a lot of that. That's almost like a morning ritual. I need. That to was do. my next question. Are you are you one of those guys? Are yeah, you are you like a people to, watcher? Uh, not not necessarily people. Actually, the people part of it was kind of a little. It gave me a bit of an uneasy feeling, but I was also really? kind of drawn to it because I thought, well, this is crazy. Like well, this is all just happening. It's kind of like you can't feel your eyes away from it or something. Right. Like because I was on the third floor and I was watching somebody with like. Uh, uh, probably smoking like crystal meth or something, and then there's a person across the streets having like some sort of breakdown, uh, brushing her body with her hairbrush, and then you know like old ladies feeding pigeons and dogs running around and like it was just this all this stuff was going on. I couldn't stop looking, but generally I like nature a lot more than people watching. <laughs> you know, you said when the watching the people part yeah. kind of freaked you out a little bit. Talk to me about that. Uh, I just. Uh, it's more just in terms of, well, I mean, I, I think it probably just has to do with when you s see things in front of you. I think a perfect example would have been, I was in France, I was in Paris, and for the first time ever, this was, I don't know, maybe 10 or so years ago, and I'd never seen a homeless child before. Like, have you ever seen a, you see a lot of homeless, like, no. small children. Yeah. And it was like I saw my first kind of, like, cup, a homeless person with a child, and I was kind of like, this is really this is kind of weird. Like, I don't know how I feel about seeing this. Like, you know, and then going, well, you have to see this kind of shit. How the hell will you know that it's happening if you don't? And you go on, like, for 30 years and you never see anybody homeless or you never see a kid or you never see someone shooting up or whatever. And you get shielded from that, right? And then you just worry about whatever is going on in your life. And that's 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 what, what life's about. So it was, I find it's, like, important to see those things. But at the same time, it gives me a slightly uneasy feeling because I just think it's like it's shitty. Yeah, it's shitty that that <clears> is going on, you know. Like, and 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 that's kind of that's pretty much the the gist of it, you know. Like, I just, you know, you kind of got to see things that aren't good. You can't hide away from them. Like my wife, uh, it's funny because she, I'm married, and my wife, she, uh, she has a hard time uh, listening to the news and stuff like that okay. because she finds it's like it makes her, it gives her anxiety to see certain things totally get that and yep. uh and so and i'm always kind of like well like you gotta see this stuff but i mean I, I i can't put myself in her shoes like she has the feeling she has it's that's that's her thing you know i'm not going to try and dissect it and mm -hmm. change her or whatever you know she's she's got them but i but to, personally i think it's important to to see that kind of stuff you know and so even though this was just this was just kind of like chaos all happening and i I got this little bit of uneasy feeling, but yeah, it was weird. I just felt like I couldn't stop watching what was going on around me. It, it's funny because I'm about to dance dangerously close to the one question you said don't ask about. It's just in this particular yeah, case, yeah. I'm wondering, like, do you use, like, because, like, that's the real life shit, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Do you use that when you're, like, when you're getting into songwriting, or does your head just go into a totally different... It's it's more, like, it, it, there there's definitely kind of an existential element to it at times, you know? Mm. Um, but never as, I never, I don't like to generally tell stories about a thing. Okay. You know? Like, I don't, I don't like tend to, not specifically, it's, it's got to be very vague. In my in my books, it's got to be something that it, that someone can listen to, and if if put together properly, they can interpret it into something that affects them. That's that's cool, right? You know? Like if they and and that's that's be, the other thing is too is generally with music, I I do, I sing in the band, I write lyrics, but my main focus is always on the music and even the sound of vocals. Not so much necessarily make that perfect line that explains the perfect scenario or or, or whatever theory of what I'm, life's supposed I'm to be. I'm always so interested when I when I talk to guys like you because I was always the exact opposite. Like yeah. I don't think I started listening to the music part of music mm -hmm. until five years ago. Oh yeah. 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 Like until then it was always, always, always about the lyrics, the story, the writing what do you have to say? Like any song that basically repeated the same line more than fucking twice, I was out. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Like sure. you just to me that was you gave up. Mm -hmm. You couldn't fit. You know what I mean? And yeah. now I look at it completely different. But, but that was really like the spot that I came from. And it always amazes me that anybody ever gave a shit about the like the music part of it. <laughs> like and, and I'm being a little facetious yeah, when yeah, I say that, but sure. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. And I think that like 
the, the thing is, is that that's kind of the great thing about music. Anyone can do whatever they want, right? Yeah. And when I when I come from a place of saying that's how I work, it's never in a it's never coming from a position of I in any way think that I'm doing something better. Or oh more, yeah, you know. Yeah. It's always kind of just like this is how my brain works. Like I I can't do it another way. Mm -hmm. That being said, there's there have been times when it just came out of me and it just made sense. Yeah. You know, like, and I think that maybe if if I was in a scenario where I could just spend all day writing music and lyrics and doing those things, like I didn't have to, you know, pay the rent or right. do things like that, I might I might do things slightly differently. But it's all kind of yeah, about to me it's 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 all about what what my surroundings are and kind of I work within that box of what my surroundings are you know if you gotta pay rent you gotta work sometime you can't just do this if you don't you know it's it's more it's almost like more like a a working a working fellas <laughs> <laughs> style of, of right. doing things you know it's all it's on a schedule and like the the record that we're releasing that we're touring right now is a perfect example of that because our drummer moved to Vancouver okay about uh, after we released our last record he moved to Vancouver, which was about four years ago, and we s it was imperative to us as this group that we're in to stay together and to keep doing it, and not to try and find another drummer, or we were just like, if we're going to find a drummer, we'll just start another band. Like, we don't right. need to. He's a killer. If you're here, he's a killer. He's just insane. But, uh, but it was really important for us to do that. So then it became, how do we do this mm -hmm. with you mm -hmm. living there, right? And of course we have. The technology we have at our fingertips makes it a heck of a lot easier yep. than it ever has before, but that doesn't account for motivation. Oh yeah, for you sure. You know, like when yeah. somebody's not there, all of a sudden it's like you know you have the rest of your life you have to worry about, right? Yeah. So making the record was it was a was a case of it's like you're we're in this box, this is where we are, and now how do we make this into a a, a record, you know? Right. And so it took it took a lot of time, but it's it's kind of like again, like I said, the working within that whatever the boundaries are that you have. You know. I think that's really the key in, in all of it, right? It's yeah. just is, and, and the more and more I work and the more, because I, I work in a bunch of different disciplines, right? And I, and I talk to people in a bunch of different disciplines and it just over and over and over again, I think the, the one thing that is always true is that the art is defined by its constraints. Yeah. You know what I mean? For sure. And it, it, it's, it's funny because I think we're always searching for the, the perfect scenario, like, Oh man, wouldn't it be great if you know da da da, da if, if you know everything was fantastic? If we had a billion dollars and didn't have to worry about anything, I think if you had a billion dollars and didn't have to worry about you anything, do anything, I'd be on the <laughs> fucking beach. You yeah, know what I mean? I wouldn't be doing like, shit. Right, right. Like <laughs> I think I'm done talking to people. Like as far as interesting as I find everything is, I don't know that I'm going to be chasing it the same kind of way. Like I would still talk to people, but in a different way. Yeah, for sure. You in know? a way that a a billionaire talks to people. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's fun. I think I don't mean that at yeah. all, actually, the more I and more I think about I it. Because I think it ultimately, like, this is the stuff. It, it, it comes down to you seem to be very similar in that, like, ultimately it, it's not the money in this that, that makes the difference. But, man, not having the money really sort of, like, forms what it is that you get to do. Yeah. And, and, and it's, and uh, like, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to focus on, it being a money thing, but there's the, it's the reality of every day is that you have you do have to you've got you've got to be accountable. I mean, I, like I I chose to to commit to a a, a relationship with my wife, you know, and right. and and in that she chose to me as well. Like obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. one sided, right? <laughs> yeah. But uh, but like and and in doing so, there are things that that come with that, right? Like and and so and all sorts of things, you know, but. Uh, but yeah, it's it's good though, right? Because isn't it isn't it true that like the best wait a second, wait a second, right wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. There was there was a, I don't mean to jump on you no, there, no, but you were you were going down a path that I think is sort of like there's something in your mind here right now What's that? about something to do with your wife. You, you, talk to me about your relationship with your wife. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, it, it's yeah, we work really well together. It's <laughs> but the and we really like each other. <laughs> let, but let but tell me tell me about what your relationship is like because you're a guy that's on the road all the time and she, I didn't I mean I didn't inspect your van but she yeah. didn't seem to be here with you. No, she's not here with me. And that being said, 
like we we do tour, but I mean, we're not a full time tour band, okay. right? So okay. we, you know, and and that's the thing is there was a point when we started we were, and now it's more, uh, what it, what's like it's it's like t- more targeted, right? Okay. So now when we go on tour, when we release something, when we do it, it's very targeted. It's like okay, we have this amount of time, and we're gonna just this is what we aim to accomplish in this time mm-hmm. and then once that's done or maybe in the middle we start going okay what's the next move but it isn't kind of like a, let's go let's just go because um clay our bass player has two kids right. alan uh runs a drum shop in vancouver you know i've got a i've got my wife and 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 my what obligations i guess other obligations right you know, like things that i i enjoy and need to have done, and so so we don't we don't go to that point. It's like we need to live and be happy that way first, and get those that stuff carry taken care of, and then we get to as as uh, as a prize for doing that, we get to do what we really enjoy doing. And that doesn't mean that we aren't playing music. Like we're always playing music, but what it, like I said, in that it's targeted. We either do album releases and tour. And usually it's 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 like really tight. Like I said, we give them one day off, right? Right. And then the next is okay. If there's a festival, we'll go do a one-off. We'll do stuff like that if the if if the scenario works out for everyone's schedules. But we don't. Uh, I mean, the thing is, is that I I love my wife. I don't want to lose her. She's really nice to me, and uh, and I hope that she thinks I'm nice to her. Right. And it's more important to me that this person who 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 I know. Is going to be there to like, you know, change my fucking diapers if she has to. <laughs> is is going to be there, right? And so w- I got to give a little, right? I can't just be me all the time. And so th- I think it ties in a little bit to the learning how, like I said, I had a lot of freedom. Yeah. As a kid, you know, that it ties into just being able to go, okay, well, oh, yeah, you know, I guess you do have a point here. You know, like this isn't just about me. It's there's right. an us in this kind of. Was that a hard lesson to learn? Uh, I think there were moments when we first started, uh, when we first kind of met and, and started to get closer that I, I needed to kind of wrap my brain around it a little bit because I, I just, like I said, I didn't really work that way. I didn't, my brain didn't really work that way. But, uh, but no, it's, it's, it's cool. Yeah? Yeah, because it just means life's better for me. <laughs> you know, no, no, like, no, I totally get And you, know? you have to understand, like, I, I'm asking this because that's not the side of the story that you get to hear very often. I yeah. come from a place of the same spot. My, my wife and I have been together 22, 23 years. I'd have to sit down and get mm-hmm. out the math and, ma- math and my calculator, but um, it, it, quite a while. Yeah. And but my wife doesn't. And it like the, the joke of it is when I like most people that know me and there's quite a people, quite a bit of people that know me. The first thing they'll say is like, you're married, right? Like, we, where is your wife? And my answer is my wife doesn't give a shit about any of this. <laughs> yeah. Right. She yeah. has her life, the things that she wants to do. And, and I have my life and the things that I want to do. And then we have our life together with our family and stuff. Yeah. And it's it's there. It's not a traditional relationship that yeah. way. And it's got to be that way, though. Like, I think that that's, I mean, that's how I like to think of approaching. Th- I mean, I, that's how I, I would do it. That's how I like to try and do it anyway. It's right. a simple idea of it's just like, you know, she doesn't come to a lot of our shows um, wh- it, when we're home. Right. She, she'll come every once in a while. Like, if it's a, she'll come for the album release and stuff like that. But, uh but no, she doesn't come to a lot of the shows, and and she's fine with that, and I'm cool with that. I'm like, you know, she gets to see me every day. What right. is she? What I need to like dance on a stage for her or something? You know, like <laughs> I'll dance for her in the bedroom. You know, like I'll dance for her. I. She, you can ask her. She, can, I dance all the time. You know, like she should probably just take like nice to get a little break. But no, I know that she she misses me when I'm gone, and I miss her very much when I'm when I'm away. Like we, but we talk all the time, and I mean it's. I think also too getting a little bit older touring not old at all but like after doing it for a while and we've all had bands even before right and mm-hmm. uh, I don't need to go and get wasted every night or you know like I don't right. need to do that so it's not like there are any of those types of issues that are going to sure. come along with it we're all kind of 
goof, you know. <laughs> We're going to end up, the most, the best part of the night's going to be, like, the snack off at the at the vending machine at the hotel, you know? Like, that's, that's, oh, we're going crazy. Don't tell them I had Doritos. Um, it, it, it's funny because you, earlier you sort of alluded to what you do in, musically and, and sort of in this, in, in your band, as, like, a work, like, a, a, a worker's, way of doing music mm -hmm. you you think about it like that don't you yeah and it's not that i do I, it's not that i just think music is work even no, no, though no. it is right but it but it's kind of one of those things it's like you've got to get this isn't easy right it's it takes a lot of commitment mm -hmm. so i mean there's a work there are work aspects to it and it 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 does take work but i don't i mean i guess i'm just thinking mm -hmm. of work in the in the negative con connotation and it's not just like the grind in a bad way because like you know, driving across, like we talked about with distance, driving across the country and, and, you know, sleeping in the van sometimes and doing these things like on people's floor or whatever, all these things, you know, there's got to be some love in there or you <laughs> wouldn't be doing it, right? Right. But, uh, but it is, it is like, it is a grind, you know, like you've got to do the things in life that get you by so that you can do the things that you love to do, right? So... I, I sort of wonder if, because like it doesn't seem to me like you come from a place where like one day we're gonna be rock stars. No, we never do. R our, our album's called Loser Delusion. That's that's the whole like that's it right there. You know, I mean, in terms of meaning, I don't like to go into so much, but it's kind of like <gasps> there it is in your face, right? And right. We, we never. I mean, I think. I feel like it's, uh, I think something that I hear from people a lot, and, and it's something that kind of bugs me when I hear it, but I'll, I'll be talking to someone like who played in a band or something like that, and they tend to go in and, the, and there's like this caveat they add to the conversation, um, I don't know if that's the, but like to the conversation in advance, which is like, yeah, yeah, I played in a band, yeah, but like, I was just doing it for fun. <laughs> I'm all just like, are you a fucking idiot, man? <laughs> like, what do you think I do it for? Like, right. we all just did it because we had this idea. Like, I mean, I guess people do do that, and that's why you're asking me, right? Is there are people who do it, but to me, that just seems absolutely absurd, right? Like, why that, would you do that? <laughs> this is so dumb. Yeah, I didn't do it for fun. It's like, oh, I'm sorry that like this label decided to release this, but like, I'm doing it because I like doing it. You know? That it's it's funny that you put it that way because I've never quite thought about it in that specific terms, but that's hilarious. Well, I'll just do it for fun. Well, the rest of us are doing it for what then? Yeah, like, oh, your, uh, yeah, anyways, I always just thought it was, I thought it was funny, but I also tend to be a little bit like, you know how, I mean, I, I find with text messages how it's like, it doesn't matter what, for example, it doesn't matter what your intent was when you sent me this text. What matters is how I read it. Right. You know, like, did I read it in a surly manner? Did right. Did I read it in a joking manner? There is like, no tone you know? button, yeah. Exactly. So there's always some, uh, some, yeah, there's always different ways to read read something. But I, that's just kind of this weird, this way that I sometimes hear that type of uh, comment. So it's, it, uh, it's pretty funny. It, I think what's fascinating to me about sort of the, the route that this has gone down is I talk to, because I, I, I'm privileged enough that I get to talk to a lot of different people at a lot of different levels, all the way from people just starting out, just coming up on to, to the vanilla ice. Right? Yeah. You know? Um, and ultimately, no matter where you are in this position, somebody is going to look at you and go, meh. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, all the time. And and it doesn't matter where you are on that scale. And I'm, I get very thoughtful about the amount of time that I know I myself and, and a lot of the people that I know who have come up through this spend on adjusting what you're doing for those fucking people. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's always a, a difficult one. But I don't, I don't, uh, I can't worry about that. Like right. I can't, I can't worry about the people who don't like it because I mean I don't like things. Right. I mean, I think we live in an age where all of a sudden now it's like you cannot like what I'm doing and you can tell the world that you don't like what I'm doing. <laughs> right. <laughs> the world, you know, and, and I mean, personally, I think it's I don't really enjoy um, 
calling people out in those t- in in artistic outlets, you know, like because it, there's music, it's for someone. Somebody's gonna like it, and right. somebody's inevitably gonna hate it. Like, and and what are you gonna do, right? Like you can't you can't and you can't adjust for that. I think we we were talking about uh, the band and I were talking about how there was a so when we started we we put out a we put out a couple of records and we kind of got put into this people just decided there were just people that liked it and honestly there was no intention of we kind of liked thin lizzy and we liked like uh a lot of the classic 70s rock metal bands right. and stuff like that and so we really liked that stuff but it's funny how com- common it is to like like something but the music that comes out doesn't it's not like that right you know and sometimes maybe it was but we so we started we put out an ep we then put out our first record and and a certain kind of group responded to it and so when they responded it it's almost as if that rubbed off on us okay the the fact that a community responded to us rubbed off on us to the point where i felt like maybe we started to write for those people okay and that and i i think that was m- when we realized it, we kind of had to stop. And All say, right. You know, like, I feel as though they, they liked us because we of the way that we do what we do, not because we tried to make ourselves fit into what it was that they were saying it was. And then, and then so we, we, we had to, but we had to make a mental note to do that because you kind of, like, I'm sorry. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily, like, a narcissistic attitude or anything but like when people like your music it feels good yep. it feels great yeah when people like what you're doing i mean it's it's you, you go up and you play on stage we could just sit in studio like the jam space and play together to, and have fun right mm-hmm. but 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 there you, nobody can nobody that's playing on stage for the most part can say there isn't part of them that wants to be liked you right. know the, to like this creative outlet that they've had that being said a lot of them aren't going to like it, right? It's, so I'm just <clears throat> got to brush it it's aside. It's so funny that you bring it up that way because I spend a lot of time I, I spend a lot of time talking to people on here about a lot of what we've talked about so far, like you know, developing it as an artist, the, the things that sort of like mo- not motivate your art, but sort of motivate you as a human to create art, right? Yes. For for lack of a better term. But it, it's funny because m- the majority of of my guests have been musicians. And that may not be that may not be a topic we've really tackled yet. Yeah, is the dichotomy of the because almost everybody that I've talked to I would consider an artist. There are a couple that are like all right, whatever. Yeah. But most most of them I would consider artists or at least trying to explore ideas. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, it always comes down to the same idea: like you've got to do what what you feel is correct. But then we do live in this world where we take whatever it is that we've built and we go, all right, now look at it and tell me what you think. Mm-hmm. It's, <clears throat> it's a weird space. Yeah. It's a weird headspace. Do, sure. do you have a perspective on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. It is, it's, it's, yeah, I think that might be a little, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to say about it because, I mean, you, it is what we do, but I don't. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta stump me on where to where to go with that, right? Like, I mean, we uh, all I know is we just we make it and we want to get it out there, and and you know, like, sure, there's probably some like childhood dream of being like, you know, Vince Neil or something like that, or you know, right. like, but uh, but yeah, I I. Yeah, you got me. You got me. I'm. I don't. I'm not. I'm trying to think of where to go with that. But you know what? Maybe that it. It's just. I don't think I've ever paired the two together before. Even though it's such an obvious pairing. Like yeah. I. I don't know that there's an answer to it. Mm-hmm. It's just. It's. It. It fasc- Like those are the kinds of things that fascinate me about creativity and about art and about um, about the world that folks like you and I find ourselves in. Like we mm-hmm. spend a lot of time. Doing a bunch of doing things where we tell ourselves and each other that it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks, and then we do them to a point where we go, "All right, now tell me what you think." Yeah, yeah. It, it comes back to what you were saying before, like, "Oh, I just do it. To, I just do it for. I just do it for fun, man." Well, yeah. <laughs> all right, for you know, sure. it, yeah. it's the same sort of idea to me. I don't know if well, there's a. 
I think I think that one one of the things that would be is the fact that like you you want to make sure that you're able to present something that is how you intended it to be, and then to say do whatever do your worst. Right. You know, do your worst. If you hate it, it's cool. But it there is something to say about having some uh, having some skin in the game. You know? Right. Like you know, we put this. Uh, there's a there's a, a, a YouTube channel called Stoned Meadow of Doom. Okay. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's I don't know where the guy is located, but he has you know three hundred thousand subscribers, and what he does is he's like, if you want me to, I'll put your record up here, and it's a great it's his business, right? right. But he's like, I'll put your record up here, and and everyone can just have at it, right? And because he has so many subscribers, it's just ex it explodes, right. right? But you get you, you get, get it all, yeah, right. <laughs> and and I mean, you get it all within the fact that he does kind of it is a little genre specific, right? So so you know, more often than not, probably it's going to be a little more uh, a little better. But that being said, people people have no problem spelling out bullshit, and, right? And telling you, right? Yeah, and so. I kind I do kind of like that because when you work so hard at something, you kind of want to see how it stands up. It's not necessarily a testament to you um, as me, Bob. It's more a testament to like in here. Did it, does does it stand up? Because I load up, put a lot of work into that, right. right? And a lot of time and a lot of effort. Like I said, got drummer. All this shit flying back and forth, recording online, sending them drum tracks back and forth. You know, it's it's it is important for whatever reason. I feel that it's important, but I also still, like I said, is live is where it's at for me. I yeah. like I like being on stage with my buds. I think uh, I think it's it's almost like that validation point, right? Yeah. Like my my biggest form of all, I've had. I've had people, you know, tell me my stuff is garbage. I've had tell people tell me, oh, it's the greatest thing in the world, but, uh, all of which is wrong. I think my, the biggest form of validation I ever had was somebody who had no idea what music videos were. This, it was, it was, it had no idea what production is, you know, no, nothing connected to film, television, whatever. And I showed them a music video I was producing. When, when they were done watching, they looked at me and went, that looks like a real music video. Best form of validation I ever had. Yeah. You know, I was kind of insulted at the time. Yeah. But it really is the best form of validation. Like, okay, you, you, yeah, all right, you're, you're one of them kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. And I've noticed that uh, in the last little while, we haven't been posting a lot on our social media accounts of, like, um, specific, so specific things like um, g g what I consider to be, like, generic reviews mm -hmm. that aren't that sound as if I'm not, you don't have to like it or dislike it, but you have to at least have listened to it, <laughs> you know? Yep. And, and when there's one, every once in a while, when there's one where I, I feel like somebody, at, le at the very minimum, they get what I'm doing, they get it. it, I'm like, holy crap, this is crazy. I can't believe somebody actually, like, was able to articulate, what, I don't know who this person is. Right. And they were able to say something that kind of, it meant something to me to, to read, you know. But, I mean, and, yeah, that's, that's kind of neat, I guess. <laughs> it, well, it's, it, it, it goes back to, like, one of the ideas that I push around is that, like, learning music is like learning a new language. But it, what you're talking about is communication. You, you, you formed a sentence and somebody heard it and wrote back to you and understood what you said, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. That's and awesome. The, the way that I was trying to say it, yeah. Is that the goal for you? Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe. I think the goal for me is is uh, is longevity <laughs> to continue to do it. Right? Ten years seems pretty pretty longevitous. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> good. But I think we can do another ten. I don't think we don't have we we had a we have a band name for like it's the only thing and you're gonna be the first. This nobody else knows about this, so I'm gonna keep exclusive. it exclusive. Called Life Band. Okay. Okay. We call it Life Band because we're like. This is the type of band that we feel like we could just keep writing and keep making music. Now, whether that's a passing thing, it's been something that's been floating around the van for 10 years now. And there isn't really any, aside from the fact that we, like I said, it's a little more targeted in, in the moves that we make is pl for playing shows and recording. We just continue to do it and we don't, I don't see it ending, right? I mean, if we lasted 10 years, 
<laughs> you know? another touring around in a in a econo line, right? That's it. Well, Bobby, I got to tell you first, welcome back to Windsor, my friend. Thank I you. I can't wait to see you play tonight, and I can't wait to see you play again in ten years. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Pleasure, man. Me, All right, folks. Uh, like this episode, like all our other episodes, you can uh, check the descriptions down below. Uh, there you will find links to uh, to Black Massive. Uh, I'm going to screw Black it up. Massive. It is Black Massive. I didn't screw it up. All right. So you can find links to Black Massive. You can find links to ourselves and all of our amazing sponsors. Of course, there's subscribe and link buttons and bells and all of that stuff. Click it. Share it around. Tell people about it. That's how you find out about us. We'll see you next time, folks. Bye-bye.